and all these knives are sharpened on both sides and so what makes what's nice about that is sometimes when you're carving in the grain switches instead of having to turn the wood around you can carve you can carve both directions and you'll find times where you're carving where it makes sense to to carve this direction sometimes it makes sense to carve the other direction so it's really nice that they're sharpened on both sides so the next thing that people want to know is how do you keep these tools sharp uh, and that is a good question because carving tools need to be sharpened regularly and they need to be kept really really sharp um, if you're especially if you're carving red cedar your tools need to be even sharper than they would be if you were carving other woods because red cedar uh, is a little softer and it tends to tear so if your knives aren't really really sharp uh, your your carving is not going to look as smooth and it's going to look like it's been torn. So um, there are numerous methods to sharpening. Uh, people use stones, uh, sandpapers of different grits, um, some people use machines. The simplest way that I've found, and this was taught to me by my father, um, is to take I usually have several different grits. Now if I'm, when I'm carving, and if you're careful of your blades and you don't clack them around, when metal hits metal, it damages them and causes little chips in them. If you touch your knife blade up regularly, you shouldn't have to use any big heavy grits um, for sharpening. But I use a little form like this and it's kind of rounded, a little bit bigger rounded on one end and a smaller little rounded portion on the other end. And this is very versatile because if I'm sharpening one of these um, long semi-bent knives like this, I can still pull this along the edge here and it gets in there just fine. Um, now the principles behind sharpening these edges if you're not careful you can round off the edge of your blade and you can make it more dull than before you started so these are, are ground like this and so when you're sharpening you know you don't want to pull your what you're sharpening with across like this or down too far you want to really follow the edge and so I hold the knife like this and I look at the edge and I line this up and I pull it at the same, the same angle that the edge is going. And for the longest time, um, I would pull this like this and I would drop it off the edge and I couldn't figure out why my tools were so, you know, dull. And my dad said, oh, what, what you're doing is you are rounding off the edge. You absolutely do not want to round off the edge. He said, you pull what you're using down and you stop. You stop and don't let it fall off. Because every time you fall off the edge, you're pulling that edge down and you're rounding it over. So that's a really critical thing is not to, um, to round off your edge. So I hold it and I look at the edge and then I go to the other side And I'll give it enough passes until, you know, and you can kind of feel it and you'll feel that you have created a little bit of a burr going down. And so at this point, if I sharpened the knife and left it there and went to carve, it would still probably carve, but it would feel a little bit funny. So now what we have to do is we have to flatten the back again. So um, you can take the same grit paper laid on a flat surface or this one does have a flat edge and I just put the knife on there so I feel it's flat and I just pull it and if you need to you can tip it up a little bit on this side and now what I'm doing is I'm flattening that edge and if you're careful you can feel now you're back to like a razor sharp edge and it should be sharp enough to to literally shave with and then the very last step um, is stropping or honing um, your knife and that's uh, it can be done in several different ways um, I've seen people put polishing compound on wood or some form of rubber 
what I like to use is leather and I will put, um, people use different sorts of uh, aluminum oxide, very fine, you know, two, three, four thousand grit paste or powders and they apply it to their leather strop and then you're going to do exactly the same thing that you just did. You're going to follow that, that angle and you're not going to drop the sharpening uh, tool off the edge because this will round it off as well and this creates like a mirror polished finish. And then the same thing, you want to take your knife and you want to make sure it's flat and you just want to pull it and polish the bottom. And then you might see that you start to get a real shiny, um, smooth finish. And the difference between a knife that has not been stropped and polished to one that's, even if it's really sharp, uh, you feel it has resistance and drag in the wood and it will not leave your um, cut as smooth. And part of what this does is that the back of your knife is so smooth and these edges are so smooth as you're cutting you're also almost sort of burnishing your wood uh, smooth with the bottom of the knife and so when a knife is really sharp it cuts through very easy and you look at your wood and it almost kind of leaves the wood with a shiny little bit of a burnished surface so um, a very important part uh, to keeping your knives sharp is is uh, stropping them and as you're carving, um, if you're carving and your knife feels to get a little bit dull, what you want to do is if you're doing it regularly, you can get away with just, um, just doing it with the leather. And that, what that does is it cleans off any residue from the wood um, and it kind of brings it back down to that razor sharp edge again. And then every so often you might have to go back with some fine you know, this is crocus cloth, um, but you could use, you know, 600, 800, 1,000 grit, uh, something that's very um, mild, mild abrasive, and that will get it nice and sharp, and then you want to strop it. But if you, if you find that uh, you're cutting and you start seeing marks in the wood and you look at your knife edge, you might see a little nick, you know, and everybody refers to that as a burr in the blade. And at that point, then you're going to have to probably go um, and use a higher grit, like say 300, and you're going to have to really keep working at it until you get that little burr out of there. And once you do, then you will go from 300 to 400 to 600. Um, up to a crocus cloth or something even more than that uh, and then you'll go back to your stropping and then you should have that burr removed but if you're careful with your knives you know you shouldn't get burrs but we're all not that careful and sometimes we throw them in carving bags and we might get a little nick in the in the blade or something um, and so like on something like this that's once again I've, I've seen people use dowels and they'll wrap their abrasive paper around a dowel and you know really whatever works to get in there is is the right thing so there's no right or wrong um, unless you're rounding off your edge but you know I've been in circumstances where I didn't particularly have a little wooden form like this that I'd made and so I actually just rolled up a whole bunch of abrasive paper until it itself was a little tubular thing and then I just very softly drug that across my edge you know and then laid it out flat and then did the back of my knife like that and that can work um, in a pinch as well it is nice to have a dowel or some kind of a form um, but in a pinch you know you can even even just wrap some paper up if you have it and pull it down like that um, yeah, and the same thing with these little guys, uh, even the little small ones, that's where the little, the smaller edge comes in. Um, and you can get in there and you, same principle, you watch your angles, you don't drop the thing off, you stop before you drop off the edge. You know, and you can really feel a difference when your knives are sharp. A lot of times when we're carving, 
will carve along for a couple hours, you know, and if you're good with your tools, you can make a dull knife work. <laughs> But then you stop and you sharpen and you're like, oh yeah, that's what I was missing, um, a nice sharp edge, you know. And, and it really, it's a pleasure to go through the wood when your knives are like razor sharp. And I've carved with some dull knives and uh, you can get it done. It's just not, not as pleasant and you can't get the surface finish um, on the wood that you can if you have like a really nice razor edge polished knife. Most carvers, no, that's the one thing they don't want anybody else doing is sharpening their tools. Um, my dad, now I would let my dad sharpen my tools. My dad would not let me sharpen his tools. You know, but that's because uh, he watched me for probably six or seven years round off my knife blades. And he would say, wow, he just, you know, totally destroyed the edge on that, way to go. <laughs> but, um, you know, Knife sharpening is its own little art form and technique. So the next question a lot of people want to know is, um, what are these little sharpening forms? Okay, well, um, this is something that you know I I learned from my from my father, um, and I've just gone with it because it worked really well. He would take uh, little pieces of wood and he would run them through a table saw or band saw and would make them a little bit thicker on this side and a little bit thinner down here. And then he would um, take them either to a sanding belt and round them off or I've seen him actually hand carve them round and then you take some sandpaper and you sand it smooth. Now what I've done on, on some of them is uh, I take a little bit of um, a spray adhesive like a contact cement and I will measure my um, abrasive cloth uh, so I know it's just going to fit just right on this form and I'll open it up and I will spray a little bit of this fast setting adhesive I will set my little wood form on top of it and then I will fold over and fold over the abrasive paper you know and push it down you don't want to get any air bubbles and lumps uh, under there. You want to get it as nice and tight to it as you can. Um, and if you and this is an excellent way, but the abrasive paper does wear out, and so you'll have to you know take a little exacto or something and peel it up and peel it off. And every so often, you know, when it wears out, you'll put a new abrasive paper on there. The other way is if you have a dowel. Um, I've seen people wrap the abrasive paper around it and they'll just kind of hold it there and they'll do their sharpening like that and then it's not really fixed to the dowel and so when that little section wears out and isn't sharpening as well they'll unroll it a little bit and take some scissors and cut off that section and then they've got a fresh section exposed and that's uh, that's a fine way to do it as well you know, I like it this method just because it's solid, it's affixed. I don't have to worry about holding it together. You know, it's just ready for me, you know, whenever I want it. And I usually have these in, um, I usually like to have two or three of these, you know, in a coarser, a medium, and a fine grit. And I usually have them all just right available. That way, you know, anytime I need them, I just grab them and quickly touch up. But, uh, this particular one here, I think, um, may have been a piece of molding. I think, um, I think I found a piece of molding somewhere at the hardware store, and I thought, you know, it's weird that that's just the right shape. And so I just took it and sawed it off in chunks, and it was basically made to order uh, already. So. You know, improvising and finding things that work for you, um, that's the right method. If it works, it's the right method. So you can kind of see what other people do, what works for them, and find out what works for yourself. But that's, that's how I do it, and that's how my dad kind of showed me how to do it. And it, it works, and so I don't try to fix something that's not broken.